Howdy folks, Kevin here with a hopefully not too long update for you. The minds over at WebDriver.io have released a brand new spanking major update to the framework. Uh, version 5 came out the other day. You can see we're at a 5.0.3 already. So we've got a brand new website with a new slightly altered design and everything, updated guide, new website and everything, and a new blog on their blog, we'll switch over there. They talk about version five being released. That's their current update. And yes, lots of time to celebrate. This has been a very, very long process for them to get it updated. A lot of work from the community, say 34 different uh, contributors getting this put together. So great work by everybody to get this in place. I've got a couple commits in there, but it's mostly just like typo fixes, nothing too important. For, it's, a, it's a big change. And so I wanted to cover what you can kind of expect. Um, and they have a, a section here on how to upgrade to version five. What I wanna look through though is just this change log. I won't go through all of this, but we're gonna take a look at that change log. So let's get into it. Okay, so they break this up into breaking changes and then updates and bug fixes and all that kind of stuff. Um, the first thing that they've done is moved the WDIO command. This is the command you run inside the command line from the WebDriver IO package to a new package called WDIO slash CLI. This means to run this WDIO command, you'll need to install this CLI agent instead of WebDriver IO. I'll have a video hopefully soon kind of covering installation and everything. Um, I did do an update video a while back that kind of covered it, but I don't know if they've made changes since then. So I'll have something out soon for that. One of the Larger changes that you'll notice if you're upgrading from version five, 4 to 5, so you've written your test in version 4, is they've eliminated the ability to use browser.click, so instead you have to do element.click. Now you could just do dollar sign.click, so it's almost the same as browser.click. You're basically just moving this over to replace the browser. But it, uh, I kind of like the change because it makes things a little bit clearer as far as what does what, um, who's responsible for what. So if browser is just responsible for browser, general browser stuff like getting the title of the page, and then things like clicking on elements and stuff is all bound inside of this element command. That's kind of neat. This next change, no, no command chaining anymore. I don't think that's gonna impact too many people. Um, most folks weren't writing it in standalone or asynchronous mode. Um, I'm guessing that most people are using the test runner for this. So I'm not expecting this to be a huge change, but it's important to know about. Basically, you can't do browser.url.set value. You have to separate them all out. This change here isn't huge, but it is something you know you want to know about because if you do get into more complicated scenarios where you're returning a result from like browser.execute or you get into like the elements command um, where you're getting multiple elements, it used to output the JSON response the raw JSON response back from Selenium. Now it returns just the value that you're looking for. So it, it simplifies things in that you don't have to worry about session ID, which you really wouldn't be worrying about, or status. Um, it kind of cuts out that extra step of having to get to that. But if you have used um, return values from browser.execute, this is going to throw issues in your test because you're going to be treating it like an object, but uh, it's actually just going to be a, a single value. So be aware of that. So another change that most folks, I'm guessing, aren't going to worry too much about. Basically, it just changes how you start up a new instance in that uh, once you create remote, you don't need to do a knit. Um, I'm just going to skip over it because I don't see this being super important for folks. And if it is, they'll probably know more about it. Uh, here's a big, big list of command changes. Basically, they wanted to standardize on how all the commands are written or named. And so they've done that with this uh, update. So they kind of took the chance when they could to kind of standardize on all of that. So this is going to be a big set of changes for folks who are upgrading from version four to version five. Wait for visible is something that I use fairly often. And now it's going to be wait for displayed, um, is visible versus is displayed. So this whole list is going to be probably the bulk of your upgrade effort here is getting these renamed. Uh, I'm guessing there could be a script written that converts all of these. I don't think that would be too difficult. I wonder if anybody out there has tried this sort of thing. If so, leave a comment and let me know. I'd love to take a look at it and see how it goes. Um, I am going to 
do a couple videos probably on upgrading from version 4 to version 5. Some of the old tests that I have written to kind of show some of the things you need to make it a change to. Here's a big one, element to find element and elements to find elements. Now most people would probably use the dollar sign and double dollar sign for that, but I do see element and elements used quite a lot, so be aware of that. Here they're converting all these um, element ID commands, which most people don't use because those are kind of hidden behind um, much more functional commands, but it is important to uh, know about. Looks like local storage has been expanded to be a little bit more separated as far as the different commands. I think I've used local storage once or twice, but not too often. Screenshot is now take screenshot. That'll be important. Submit is now element submit. So this no longer takes a form. Um, it takes a, can't remember. Uh, I'm gonna take a guess and that now it takes an element to submit on. Uh, submit has gone undergone some big changes since 4.5, I think. I do use uh, window handle full screen um, and window handle maximize uh, to maximize the window before I run my test uh, quite often. So that's a change that I'll need to pay attention to. From has focused to is focused. I think I have a couple tests that test focus, uh, particularly with input elements. So that's it for the renaming of the commands. A lot of stuff kind of behind the scenes or stuff that WebDriver IO uses in its wrapper functions. But they've also removed several commands. All the different clicks is now replaced with perform actions. I'm gonna have to take a look into perform actions because this is definitely something that seems to have a lot of power behind it and I need to understand how it works. You see submit has been completely replaced by clicking on the submit button. Um, I think submit was deprecated uh, a while back, so that'll be something if you haven't changed, you're gonna have to do now. One thing I noticed that no replacements for choose file or upload file um, or file itself, I wonder how you do set the, add a, upload a file to the file input, because that's something I do quite often now, and uh, I'm very interested to see how you manage that. I also got rid of wait for selected, wait for text, wait for value. I looked into it just real quickly and um, basically you're gonna wanna use wait until. Uh, alternatively, they still have wait for displayed, enabled, and exist. Those are still there, so that's good to see. But anything else, you'll just use a custom wait until command. They did introduce some new commands as well, mostly around Appium. Be interested to see how these recording screens work. Another change they made is the way that you handle add command. So if you want to add a command to an element, you have to specifically add it to that element. Before you could just kind of add it to all the elements and it would be passed along, but this one you have to add it to that specific element. In regards to reporters, they changed the way that you set the options for reporters. So you can even either define a single string or you can define an array that has the name of your reporter and then the options you want to pass in. It kind of helps in your configuration file to keep things a little bit more next to each other because you used to have like JUnit options and like spec options and um, it was kind of messy in how it's deal it so this kind of handles that. They've also done a lot of work to make sure that they match the spec compliancy. Um, pretty neat to see there but most people won't be too interested in that. It's just kind of a behind the scenes thing. Um, lots of new features, uh, new services. Um, this DevTool service looks pretty cool for front-end performance test, um, testing. I believe uh, Christian Broman has a talk on that and uh, a blog post and a couple of things. I've been meaning to get into that, but haven't gotten to it yet. An auto retry mechanism is gonna be super helpful. So on those instances where you have an element that you, gets loaded on the page after the page loads itself, Instead of having to wait for exist, it will just continually, like every half a second or so, wait or try to find that element. If it exists on the page, it'll go. Otherwise, it'll wait another half a second and then try again. So that's going to be super helpful for websites that, you know, have elements that load after the fact or any sort of interaction. Really nice. That's a, a cool feature that's going to be really, really nice. I'm really excited by it. This bug fix uh, hopefully addresses an issue where if you did chain together multiple element selectors, after a certain level, it would lose that information about its parent and it would just go back to searching the entire page. So I'm really happy to see this has been fixed because it allows you to be um, a little bit better about how you do selectors in instances where maybe you don't have a good ID or class name to hook onto, 
you can do it a little bit better with this chaining method. I hope to get a video out there soon with uh, selectors in, in WebDriver IO and the different ways you can do it. But um, so it's a really nice change. I'm really interested to see this watch functionality. You can rerun your test without starting a new session all over again. That's going to be really interesting. Um, make it a lot quicker for debugging tests, I hope. So I'll have to take a look at that sometime soon. Got new documentation. Got a blog out there. Pretty cool. Some internal things. It's now a single uh, repo for all of the packages. If you look inside the packages, all the official packages are kept inside this single repo. Makes it a lot easier to maintain, I believe. Plus it is helpful for knowing like what's officially supported and what isn't. Really cool there. They also have an at WebDriver IO NPM organization. That's going to be nice for installing official packages. If it doesn't start with at WebDriver IO, then you know it's not an official package. Might help with security in that instance. And that is about it for the change log. So there's a lot new with WebDriver IO version 5. Um, I'm excited to hear what your favorite new features are going to be or what you're looking forward to the most with uh, the update. I've got a lot of work to do on my personal course uh, on the framework. Uh, basically, I'm going to rework the entire thing, uh, something I've been thinking about for quite some time based off of student feedback and everything. Um, it really needs an update. So I'll be working hard on that for the next few months. Cross my fingers that it's only a few months time. Um, it can take a lot of a lot of effort to get everything in place to uh, get the recordings done. But overall, it's great to see that the framework continues to move forward. And congrats to everybody who worked so hard to make this um, version upgrade happen. There was a lot of work that went behind the scenes to get everything into that mono repo and to kind of polish off all the dirty bits that have kind of accumulated over the years of minor updates and everything. Anyway, I'll be back uh, sometime in the future with, an, uh, with a video on how to do the upgrade, like an actual real world upgrade, and um, also how to stick with version four. If you wanna stick with version four, you certainly can. I'll um, have a video on that sometime soon. Anyway, until next time, have fun testing.